Well, hello there, my Sagittarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising Sun. Welcome to you, your What Do I Need read uh, for this full moon to new moon next in February 2020. I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons Mal for short, president of Drawing the Circle Productions, professional witch, professional intuitive, and uh, actually really happy to be reading you. Just blessed uh, the decks that we'll be working with in a little bit. Uh, got a little high off the breathing and the energy of it. It's going to be a good read, even for a waning moon. I just have a feeling we're going to have some fun with this either way. It just feels that way, although who knows? It could just be like, ah, all the way through. So uh, before I get to the reading itself, if you are new to the channel, please do like and subscribe. Help me get to 1,000 subscribers so I can do super live chat and monetize. And I've made a promise to do a little thing, a little ditty called Junk Tarot once a month for the first couple of months, um, just for fun for my subscribers. There's a link in the description box below explaining what Drunk Tarot is. So go have a look and then please like and subscribe. Now down to this read. This is a general read. And, uh, you know, here's the thing. It's a what do I need read. So it's it can be very, very personal, but I am reading very, very large collectives of people in the quantum here. It's like quantum mining, like going down into a mine and finding different veins of different minerals. Pretty thorough metaphor, I guess. Mining the quantum field, that being said, please take what resonates, uh, leave what doesn't. Not everything's gonna work for everybody 24 seven. Um, but that's why I do sun, moon, rising signs for these. And keep in mind, it's also from uh, full moon to new moon. Actually, the full moon is in Leo on the 9th of February, which is a Sunday, but it's at like 2.23 a.m. Eastern, I think. Uh, so if you're going to do any sort of intention work and you want to get the waxing side of the, the full moon, do your work Saturday night, just saying. I'm a witch. This is what I do. I will certainly be casting Saturday night. That said, uh, the end of it, the moon is in Pisces on the 23rd. So waning moon can often be about letting go, right? Softening up, releasing, relaxing, that that kind of stuff. And we've got a, a retrograde coming up too. Mercury retrograde's on its way. I'm going to do reads for that too. Uh, I'll get to those. Uh, so just take this as asking the divine, what do I need? Like, what do I need to know? What do I need to do? What do I need to be aware of? Um... And, you know, my guys and I were talking about it today. I was like, you know, people seem to not go for them. They're like, yeah, but they're really, really helpful. It'll, it'll catch on. They said it'll catch on because it really is like going to an oracle every day and saying, not, well, what's my card of the day? What's my symbol of the day? This is being a bit more direct and saying, all right, I'm a soul. I'm a divine being in a human body just like everybody else. But what do I need? Or like, what do I need to serve, to heal, to move forward, to live, to enjoy the day, right? So it takes a certain amount of um, humility and vulnerability to ask that the divine because it may very well say you need to look at the shadow of this or that, right? So take a deep breath. Please remember to breathe. So important. Uh, we're working with different voices of the divine here. So it, the breath keeps me in the present moment as I shift kind of from one frequency band to another. They, are, they all have different flavors. Um, and that's why different decks, although we're going to double up with the Ascended Masters, they get two decks. And then the last deck at the end will be the collective, all of the pantheons that I work with, bringing you one card. Cool. So if you're being aware of your breath, and I'm being aware of my breath, we'll all be in the present moment, no matter where and when we are. And that this reading be a blessing on all of us. Cool, cool. Nice deep breath. Here we go. We're going to start with the angels. The Doreen Virtue Healing with the Angels Oracle. All the decks I read are always in the description box at the bottom, because then you got to go through and see, oh, he's got a lot of cool stuff in his description box, and go check them out. I'm good for content. I've been doing this a while. Find that still point. Deep breath. Tune to those angels. My angels, please, one card in clarity for this Sagittarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising Sign. What do they need for this uh, full moon to new moon next January 2020, please? A new beginning. Really good preparing you for a new moon. Right? There you go. 
right? And and what I love about starting with these is because it's such a clarifying celestial point of view. It's like what you need is a new beginning. Now that probably means there's a new beginning scheduled for you in the divine plan. So you can use this waning side uh, of the full moon. Yes, absolutely. When the moon rides at her peak, then ye heart's desire seek, right? Blast it out to the universe. This is what I want, my heart's desire. I personally believe that our heart's desires were given to us, that we didn't really decide what they were once we were in the body, right? They're like, your heart's desire is going to be to do this, going to help you fulfill your, your mission, right? So to seek it, to cast for it, to ask for it at the full moon, okay, whatever the fuck is going on in my heart, <laughs> let's do it. And, and then clear out what needs to be cleared out for a new beginning come new moon or sooner, because I don't think ultimately the divine plan hinges too much on a lunar timing, although you never know. It may all in some way we don't see. Uh, we're going to ask the goddesses, speaking of the moon, uh, one card for you, a daughter of the moon, daughters of the moon tarot card. Uh, from the voices of the Divine Feminine, the voice of the Goddess, however you want to see that. It's half the universal energy. So I think she has something to say. Let's breathe. Oh, Maiden Mother Crone. As one. Divine Feminine, Great Goddess. One card in clarity for this Sagittarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising sign. What do they need? This full moon in Leo to New Moon Next in Pisces for February 2020, please. What do they need? Hmm. Now, I'm going to say the word on the card. It is the Nine of Blades, which is not a fun card in other decks either. You know, that's the Nine of Blades. <laughs> the swords over your head in bed. <laughs> who, who, who has swords over their bed like that? It's so dangerous. Uh, Nine of Blades in this deck is called Criticism. Now, of course, there is the shadow side of the criticism. That's immediately where we jump. But then remember the word critical thinking, right? Critical care unit, right? It's about detail. And that's why the arrows are all pointing inwards. Now, in terms of a new beginning, perhaps there is some detail work that you need to do over this waning moon, like start to look at the details. Sages aren't necessarily known for details. Why? They were ruled by Jupiter, the planet of expansion, right? And mutable fire on top of that, right? So it's like, oh, that, no, that, that. It's always bigger, 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 bigger. But there might be some, some deeper introspection here. And keep in mind, it's a nine of blades. Not, I, I, I don't really like the idea that a tarot card is always negative or a tarot card is always positive because nothing in this world is ultimately like that. Even something traumatic can give birth to something amazing within ourselves, right? Within society. So it all balances out. It's all neutral at the end of the day. That's the divine plan for you, the ineffable divine plan. Uh, good omens. Uh, so with this nine of blades to, to really focus in, bring it in, but not just, oh, I'm going to focus on this, but keep an eye on the detail. Don't be critical. Don't be critical. If there is a critical voice inside of you, then you got to look. That's it about fear. Criticism is always about the past anyway. It's because somebody did you wrong or you made a mistake. It's like, it's a tension. It's a tightness. And it's not to repress that, certainly work on that, heal that, look at that, but to get into that there are some details here, some fine points that need to be looked at because there is a new beginning in your energy field for a waning moon means that, oh, oh, they're showing me a menstrual cycle. Of course, you would have to shed in order for the new to be born. Well, maybe there are some some stuff that is, is in the detail there critically needs to be shed. So let's ask uh, the divine male through the, the um, mythic tarot, Juliet Sharman Burke, brilliant deck of tarot for the voice of the divine masculine, the god, Zeus. It's my totem of Zeus. <sighs> Breathe. <laughs> Breathe lightning. Breathe truth. feet on the floor. <laughs> oh my gods, please. One card in clarity for this Sagittarian collective sun, moon, rising sign. What do they need for this full moon to new moon next? What's going on here for this Sagittarian collective? What do they need? Top card. Okay, I get it. 
I get it. Eight of Cups. Now, Eight of Cups, traditionally known as walking away, but sometimes it's walking towards. In fact, in this deck, it's walking down into. Uh, this is uh, uh, Psyche, Bride of Eros, of the myth of Eros and Psyche, and really everybody needs to know that myth. It's very, very telling of the path of true love, or at least one of the <laughs> side quests, if you will, <laughs> on the path of true love, if you want to video game it. Uh, this is her descending into the underworld to go and get some beauty cream from the goddess Persephone. She's got good stuff. <laughs> you bet she's got the best stuff down there. All the best stuff is in the underworld. Are you kidding? That's where all the gems and everything are, right? Oh, I love the underworld. Um, so this is the divine masculine saying to you, you need to go within, baby. You need to step back. Maybe not walk away from, but walk towards, because there is a new beginning a coming. Now, this can say maybe there is some emotional completion that you need to take a deeper look at, a more detailed look at it. Look at the facts. Yes, of course, look at what you're feeling, but get that what you're feeling and what you're thinking may be at odds. That's what I'm hearing because there's a new beginning coming. So particularly if we feel like, oh, there's no hope, oh, there, <laughs> we're doomed, it'll never work, right? And if you really go into that and say, well, okay, all right, I get that. Why do I feel that way, right? To, to, to go into the detail, not to obsess about it, because I could see that as the traditional Rider Waite uh, Nine of Blades there, but at least to focus on it, meditate upon it, and go into the emotions. If you're overthinking, get into the body, breathe. <sighs> feel. Yes, allow the emotions without the emotions taking you over, possessing you, and making you do heinous crazy, harmful shit to yourself or somebody else. That's mastery. And that ain't easy, but that's eight of cups sometimes. Go into the underworld. Face what's there. That's when, that's waning moon, baby. Let's ask the masters, right? Because the remaining decks here are all about healing one way or another. So let's have a look. The Ascended Masters are going to be talking through the Chuck Spazano Love Pack. Four suits. The Problem Suit, the Luck Suit, the Healing Suit and uh, the grace suit, the suit of grace. So nice deep breath, please. <sighs> ah, my ascended masters. One card in clarity for this Sagittarian collective, sun, moon, rising sign. What do they need for this full moon in Leo? to New Moon in Pisces. Please, my Ascended Masters, February 2020, what do they need? Problem card, you need to look at your lack of self-worth. Now, who does it? Well, no, maybe there are some people who don't need to look at their lack of self-worth. <laughs> no, but those are narcissists, and underneath that, there is a lack of self-worth. Yeah, you know, that's what fuels narcissism, is a lack of self-worth. It's all overcompensation and toxicity. And, you know, as much as we would love to get rid of all the narcissists on the planet, they're hurt, right? There's wounds in there. There's a NASA. There's a problem. Well, even Louise Hay herself, if you're not familiar with Louise Hay... Hey House, that's Louise Hay. You Can Heal Your Life, Heal Your Body. The original books, I had the original You Can Heal Your Life and the Rainbow Heart cover. Man, I'm old, I'm 50, I'm gonna be 52 this year. I know I don't look at why, because I found Louise Hay when I was in my teens. Uh, <laughs> I will be young forever, bitch. Uh, but even she says that the, the, the common core fear that we all have and it's not true, but that we're not good enough, which is lack of self-worth, right? I'm not good enough. It's not, no, it doesn't matter what I do. I'll never be good enough. Nothing's ever going to be good enough for me. You know, that's the, the projection of it. Tricky shit. But then if that's what's saying, you got a new beginning coming here, this is what needs to be purged. What are you going to do? Rip it out of your nervous system? You got to feel it. You got to feel the lack of self-worth. Now, this is where counseling and guidance and help. Now, I am a spiritual counselor. I do this work with people <laughs> all the time, but I'm not a therapeutic counselor in the sense of psychology or, or uh, MSW or CSW or any of that kind of stuff. I can help people with the spiritual part of it, and good goddess knows I have, because I do that work myself. But if this really is a thing where, where you're in a really, really dark place, I'm going to be cliche, but it's what they're giving me. It's always darkest before the dawn. This could be a rough 
waning cycle, a half cycle for you. So let's get you then really important. It seems like every time I pull one of them love pack cards, it's a problem suit for this round. So that's why we're going to turn to the Healing Mantra deck, Matt Kahn's Healing Mantra deck to get you the most helpful mantra. Now look, all you got to do is repeat it. You don't got to like it. The more you repeat it, yes, the more the subconscious is imprinted with it and takes it as more, you know, more recognizable, more familiar. But it's also signaling to the soul anytime you do a mantra, even if it's in another language like Sanskrit or something, it's like saying, I'm willing, like I'm willing to experience this. So uh, take a nice deep breath. I'm going to read from the book because one side is the name of the mantra so I can look it up in the book. The other side of the card is the mantra itself. So there's not a lot of writing on the cards. It's in the book but not tons. You'll like it if you're new to this. Nice deep breath. Make that two. My masters still point. One card, a healing mantra card for this Sagittarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising Sign. Come on, this is a waning moon thing we got going on here. Eight of Cups and Nine of Swords and lack of self-worth with a new beginning thrown in. Please, what is the most helpful healing mantra that the Sages can focus on, can use, can work with? Stir it in their coffee, chant it in their head all day long, tattoo it on the inside of their eyelids if necessary. What is the most helpful mantra for the Sagittarian collective sun, moon, rising this full moon to new moon next, February 2020. And this is 2020. Growing beyond guilt. Growing beyond guilt. It couldn't have happened any other way. Oh, it couldn't have happened any other way. Oh, you don't gotta like it. But when you get the divine plan, when you get the quantum, for your growth, the growth of your soul, not for the pleasure and comfort of your personality, but for the growth of your soul. It couldn't have happened any other way. That's master level work. That's master level acceptance. Now, you don't have to like it, but you can at least put it in the soup, so to speak. All right, maybe it couldn't have happened any other way. If it could have happened another way, it would have happened another way. This is the only way this could have gone down. It's an intense mantra. I've had this one. It brings up a lot of stuff, but wouldn't that let go of some of that lack of self-worth? If you really going, oh my God, it couldn't have happened any other way. It was just the way it was scripted. I was, a, I am a soul that was hired, chosen to play the role of this name in this body. And that's what was written in here. I need to look at that. <laughs> I need to take that deeper and I need to go inside. I need to pull in because with a new beginning coming, heal some of that. Yeah, you might ball your eyes out as you release all of that lack of self-worth that is unwarranted and was never true. Well, all of it's never true. You're a divine being playing a role. See what I mean? Spirituality, people. It ain't all Fluffy Bunny, right? In fact, very little of it to me seems Fluffy Bunny, but I'm a mystic. I'm balls to the wall. That's why. Speaking of balls to the wall, has nothing to do with balls to the wall, uh, we're going to ask the higher selves of all involved then uh, through the Whispers of Love Oracle. And I love this deck because it just comes right out and says, try this. <laughs> do what I love. It's like, do something for somebody else. Right? It's like, oh, thank you. know, very, very wise. I love this deck. So uh, take a nice deep breath. Let's ask your higher self what's going on here. One more. God, I love my breath. Still point. Oh, the higher selves of all involved, please. One card in clarity, a whisper of love for this Sagittarian collective sun, moon, rising sign. What do they need for this full moon to new moon next? What do they need to grow, to heal, to learn, to deal? Rhyme the divine. Sometimes I get stuck in rhyming loops when the divine takes over. It's really bizarre. So far. One more time. Higher selves, please. One card for this Sagittarian Collective Sun Moon Rising Sign. What do they need for this full moon to new moon next? February 2020. Keep it simple. 
No, once I went a whole, uh, I guess it was a full moon or a Sabbath or something, I just rhymed through the whole thing, and apparently Dionysus had taken me over while we invoked him. Uh, uh, here we go. <clears throat> Show simple acts of kindness. It's what I love about this deck. Show simple acts of kindness. A simple act of kindness can energize you and bring happiness to those around you. So that's your way through. Be kind. Now, here's the thing about kindness. The grace of kindness. Wrote about it in my book, Words of Grace. It is a first chakra grace, right? It is a thing we're all of the same kind. That's where kindness comes from. You don't have to try and be kind once you accept the grace of, oh, we're all fucking one. So it's not, oh, I'm going to be kind to you so the universe is kind to me. No, we'll still have our asses handed to us every now and again when needed and when necessary. But to walk through this world in a kind way, a simple act of kindness, smile at people. Today I made a barista laugh, right? Just because yeah, he was cool, I was cool, I made him laugh. It was like, that's kindness, right? It, didn't make, it wasn't derisive laughter either, but, you know, blessed be, hold doors open for people. That's going, because that kindness is going, like it says, it's going to energize you. So that's a good way through from your higher self. And it's also, of course, saying be kind to yourself, you know, show simple acts of kindness. Well, let's not purge all of this all in one 24-hour period. Let's work our way towards this new beginning, understanding that the kindest thing might be for you is this mantra, it couldn't have happened any other way. Because that's the truth of it. That is the quantum truth of it. <laughs> and we don't have to like it. We can actually resist it and hate it as much as it wants. It's not going to change that it's the way it was written. Not that there's only one way it's written, but that's the quantum version that we lived out because the soul needed that, not because the personality wanted it. I know it sucks, but it's... I said to my friend Anthony last night, we were talking about this, and that came up. I was like, do you think I would make that rule? No. <laughs> no, if I was in charge of writing how, how this works, I'm a hedonist. But then again, on a level, we all made it that way before we were individualized units of consciousness. That's why we don't remember creating this world, because, you know, the fall, right? The forget You had to forget to get in the game. So our last card down, oh, why not save the most treacherous for last, the Caroline Mace Archetype deck, which will be the voice of the collective angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher selves of all involved. They all get to pick one archetype card here. The shadow and the light of some archetypal soul power that you are either dealing with in yourself or dealing with somebody else or dealing with life itself. There can be times when we walk through an archetypal hallway in our lives. <laughs> that wasn't just archetypal in and of itself. So, um, nice deep breath, because as toxic as the shadow is, it makes sense that if you're working from full moon to new moon, you're going to be alchemizing, letting go of three atoms in, of lead to turn it into gold, because lead has three more atoms of gold, so it's a letting go. It's a waning process. So, nice deep breath arena. Let's keep our sense of humor, if possible, your Sagittarians. A couple of deep breaths here. Let's do this. Still point. My collective pantheon of angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher selves of all involved. Ooh, no. Please. <laughs> One card. In clarity, what is the dominant soul archetype that this Sagittarius collective sun, moon, uh, rising sign is either dealing with within themselves or within somebody else or, or just situationally? What is the archetype they most need to know about? Shadow and light. So they know what's in the darkness, the lead, so that they can evolve it, heal it, alchemize it into the gold and the light. One card, please. Oh, the artist. Thank God. Okay, because this is this looks rough. I won't lie to you, but with there's a new uh, a new beginning coming, and you got the card of the artist. It's really really good. Now a lot of people have the artist archetype, but because they're not in the visual or the performing arts, they don't think of it that way, right? But like everybody has creativity. This is one of the creative family archetypes. It's sort of like you could say the major arcana of the creative family of uh, of archetypes. But there are other ones in there that that are in the deck. So uh, I'll read the shadow and the light on this, but do understand if you don't consider yourself an artist, then look at the art in your world. Look at life as art. Look at the creative process as well, because the creative process 
of creativity is the same, of art, if you will, is the same as pregnancy. You conceive, right? You conceive an idea, right? You conceive a project. You, you choose, you gestate, right? You gestate, it grows inside of you. You labor, you give birth to it, and it takes on a life of its own. So it's, it, it really is menstrual in a way, right? The menstrual cycle supports all of that. So, so are cycles of creativity. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the shadow attribute of the artist archetype, uh, using talent as an excuse to mistreat others. And come on, that's happening, I think, more and more because uh, social media, we see it more and more. And as a result, that's going to happen less and less because the shadow is being brought out into the light. Uh, starving artist to, uh, posing as the starving artist to elicit pity. Now, it's one thing if you're an actual starving artist, because that's an archetype, the starving artist, but to pose that way when you're not isn't great. Uh, the light attribute. Expressing a dimension of life that is just beyond the five senses, inspiring others to see life symbolically, which is what a good artist does regardless of art form. It's taking something of the soul and communicating it. Uh, look, there are talented people who may or may not consider themselves artists, right? But then there are, are people who are artists that may not have a specific way or means of expressing that, that, uh, that invisible dimension, that soul dimension of life. Um, and that's why I say, you know, it's, some people don't think they're artists and then they can create a meal that is not just delicious, but nutritious and gorgeous. It's like, that's your art form. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm like, that can be a lack of self-worth thing. See what I mean? You put these pieces together. Um, because remember, they're all talking about the artist here. So the angels are saying there's a new beginning. And look, now look at the word criticism through the eye of an artist. Are you being too critical about your own creative process? Go deeper, right? Walk deeper into the self. Go deeper into the emotions. Even if it means walking away temporarily or permanently from something, that's what? That lack of self-worth. Well, I guess, but I don't know. It's like... <laughs> whatever got you to that place of lack of self-worth it couldn't have happened any other way use that to fuel whatever your your uh, art is as you show yourself and others simple acts of kindness right doesn't need to spend a dime to show a single a simple act of kindness even if it's through prayer even if it's through blessing uh, all makes sense with that card of the artist to give that soul impulse some sort of uh, expression in the world, but also I love the second part of this, inspiring others to see life symbolically. That's why holding open a door for somebody, just as an example, well, what's it like when someone slams a door on your face, right? So what is it when someone opens a door for you, right? It's like the opposite of that. Also, it's symbolic of opportunity and a new beginning, just as an example. So a very, very interesting uh, read, my Sagittarians. I mean, it's got its ups and downs in it. It's all about how you want to play it. What's the narrative, right? What, how are you going to navigate this for yourself as an artist, even if you don't think of yourself in that way? Keeping in mind the mantra, couldn't have happened any other way. Growing beyond guilt, allowing whatever has been holding you back in this energy that, as I said before, everybody has and everybody has to deal with, right? Lack of self-worth. Um, but then to either use this nine of, of blades, this, this to either critical focus, like, no, I'm going I'm to work on this. I'm going to heal this. I'm going to, couldn't have happened any other way. However I got here, it couldn't happen any other way because now I'm going to heal and move through this. Or to really knock off being so critical of yourself because, again, Louise, hey, she must be in the room. Hi, Louise, if that's really you. Uh, criticism never helped anybody heal. <laughs> Again, a paraphrase. Usually, like, criticism never works. Like, no one ever grew. No one ever became more loving because of criticism in that shadow way. Cool, cool. Take a deep breath. <sighs> May the Sagittarian collective sun, moon, rising signs be blessed with all that they need to heal with this full moon to new moon next. May they have all that they need in this new beginning to heal the lack of self-worth, to go deeper, to get that they can grow beyond guilt, show simple acts of kindness, and awaken the artist in their own heart and inspire others to be the best and blessed. And may they be as best and blessed as they can be this full moon to new moon next, that they may fulfill their role in the divine plan for the well-being of all. And so it is.
Ah, oh, so mode it be. Thank you so much for watching. Again, please like and subscribe. Check out my description box. Um, and really do the best you can. If you need help, reach out. I'm here. But for now, my darlings, my, my, my hunters, I love you all so much. You're so much fun. Uh, hail, <laughs> farewell, and blessed, blessed be.